Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I trust we are all doing well. Um, I'd like to welcome all of us to this session where we're going to be taken through stress management. Um, a few pointers to note. Kindly let us all mute uh, our, our videos and our microphones. Um, and at this point, I'd like to welcome our group uh, head healthcare, Julia Skiveka, to take us through the rest of the introduction of this session. Welcome, Julius. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Yvonne. And good afternoon, uh, our clients. We are happy as liaison to be together with you at this uh, presentation. I'm very sure most of us are aware of what happened from March this year. Most of our plans that we had changed. Uh, this change was necessitated, of course, by the COVID-19. Our new normal, I think, is going to change from now on. World has changed all over. Most of us, we have turned so much to technology. Also, most of us... Julius. Hello, you can get me. Hello, sorry. Uh, I was just saying the new, uh, the world changed in terms of uh, even the, the gatherings. Nowadays, uh, our me time is more. I'm, hello, I'm being muted every time I, I, I unmute. Hello. On this time, we are pleased as a liaison. Uh, to be part of this uh, stress management so that we understand how we can be able to manage the new normal uh, in terms of how the world has changed in terms of the COVID-19. And one of our partners is uh, Caroline Marubu, who is a counseling psychologist with a lot of wealth of experience on counseling, as in parenting, also employees, and also normal ways of life, is going to take us through the stress management during this time of COVID. I now uh, call upon Ms. Caroline to take us through, and I will tell uh, members who have joined us here, feel free to be able to use the chat box so much in terms of the questions that you need, the clarification that you need. And if there are some who will have uh, personal questions also, we'll also be able to direct them to uh, Ms. Caroline Marubu through the email that she has already provided for us. And I'm very sure we are all going to, uh, to benefit from this one. This is one of our areas that uh, as liaison, trying to work closely with our clients, and also we'll be running a series of them uh, so that all of us, at the end of the day, we are going to see also this COVID as also a different uh, angle in terms of the positive side of it. And with this, uh, Caroline, please take it on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julius. Um... Uh, like uh, you've heard, my name is Caroline Marubu. I'm a counseling psychologist. I'm also a marriage and family therapist. Um, this afternoon, we're going to go through uh, stress management. We're going to look at 
uh, in terms of COVID-19, but I've tried to structure it in a way that it will be helpful even just beyond COVID-19, that these are skills that you can use through any other stressful uh, situation. So thank you very much for having me. Um, let, let's start by uh, just talking about stress. What exactly is stress? You know, we, we have this habit of talking to each other. Wow, I'm so stressed. I'm really so stressed. What does that really mean? What it means is that uh, stress is a natural feeling of not being able to cope with specific demands and effects. So it comes up when we have demands that we feel are beyond our capability, that you have used all the skills that you have and you feel it is still affecting you. And it's also anything that poses a real or perceived threat to a person's well-being. It is when it is posing a threat to you. It's posing a threat to your livelihood. It's posing a threat to your relationships. It's posing a threat to your mind. Some of these things are real, some are perceived. Uh, they, they, they are really not there, but we think they're there. Uh, it also causes the body to flood with hormones that prepare its systems to evade or confront danger. This is what we call the fight or flight mechanism, where you're, uh, everything in you just decides, I'll fight this or I will run away. So normally when stress comes, you'll either want to confront it of some people withdrew from it. So there are two different ways of looking at it. Yeah. Um, not all stress is bad. Some stress is good for you. You have good stress and you have bad stress and both have different effects on your mind and your body. So when we talk about you stress, you stress is good stress because you stress motivates you. It helps you to focus. It improves your performance and feels exciting. This one doesn't last for long. So when you're talking about you stress, we're talking about stress that uh, that may make you not sleep one night and you, you, you would sleep all night. But I think someone might be on. So you stress is something like what we look at you. You haven't slept all night and you've tossed and you've turned and you've tossed and you've turned but you wake up and you tell people now i have a solution i know what to do i didn't sleep last night but now i have a solution that is you stress it is good stress because it makes you look for the the a, a solution to it it may disturb you for a while but it won't be for a long time now this stress is different because it will cause anxiety it causes anxiety that feeling that something is going to happen and something really bad is going to happen. And anxiety also tells you that I, I don't have the resources to, to cope with this. So it will cause you anxiety. It can also be very overwhelming. Overwhelming in terms that you feel like you're drowning, like this, this is way above me. I don't even know where to begin. I can't know where to end. And it makes you feel sad and helpless. It's very unpleasant, it feels unpleasant because you don't want to be in that position of stress. You're feeling I'm not in the right position and things are, are getting greater and greater for me and I really can't handle them. So it's a, a feeling of, of being feeling unpleasant. It also decreases your performance because as we look ahead, it, it decreases your performance because you can't concentrate, you can't do well. Um, you start one project, you can't finish because your mind is wandering and it keeps going back to the same, same issue that you're trying to deal with. So it, it really decreases your performance in terms of uh, work, in terms of your home life, in terms of relationships, it just decreases. This one can continue for a long time. You may have it for a long time and it just seems to be endless. And this is what makes it so unpleasant because it feels like it's endless and nothing is happening. What are some of the signs and symptoms of stress? One, there's that constant feeling of worry and anxiety. Worrying, you're thinking about the same thing. You wake up thinking about it, you sleep thinking about it, and then there's anxiety. That feeling, that foreboding feeling, something is wrong is really going to happen. Something really bad is going to happen out of this. I don't think we're going to make it out of this. And even like this time of COVID, you're wondering, hey, are we going to survive? Look at the numbers. 
eight is still increasing. And, and we keep looking at, hey, when will they ever open up? You know, and, and we are all locked in and it's feeling, you know, there's worry and there's anxiety. Then that feeling of being overwhelmed, it's it's too much. So it's causing tears, it's causing um, sleepless nights, it's causing all kinds of things because you're feeling like it's beyond you, like you're drowning. You also have difficulty concentrating. You really can't concentrate on the same thing for a while. You switch on the TV, you want to watch something, in a while, your mind has wandered. You're having a conversation. You can't finish the conversation. Even at work, you can't be able to concentrate well. Then you're eating more or less than usual. So you're eating uh, six meals in a day because you're hungry all the time. But it's not really hunger. It's just that the anxiety is causing you to look for something, for comfort. And some people find comfort in food and sometimes it's not even the right food. And then the next day you're not eating at all. The, the appetite is gone. You have changes in your sleeping patterns. You can't sleep well. Or even if you do, it's so disturbed. So you wake up feeling tired because you didn't sleep well enough. You sleep late, you wake up early. So your pattern of, change, of sleeping has changed. Then you have aches and pains, and particularly in the muscles. Remember we talked about fight or flight? So your body was ready and your muscles tensed up, ready to fight or to run. So there are pains now in the joints, at the shoulders, because the shoulders in fact just tense up and there's pain. You feel pain in your shoulders, your legs, your back. You may have diarrhea and constipation. So one day it's diarrhea, especially if, if it's a phone call that is coming through and every time the phone rings, your stomach just cuts in half and you need to run to the toilet. Or again, it can be constipation because now everything is so bottled up or you're eating wrong. You have feelings of nausea or dizziness. You feel like vomiting. You eat and you just feel it's coming up again. I feel like vomiting. And there's that dizziness. You feel lightheaded. Either because you're not sleeping well, you're not eating well, or you're just tired. So there's a feeling of dizziness all the time. I feel faint. In fact, you tell people, I feel like, I feel faint. Or I feel hot around my face. I feel funny. And then there's the loss of sex drive because of the stress. What are some of the sources of stress? Some of them may be work-related issues, overworking, or uh, retirement for people who are being retired or others are being laid off. There's a lot of layoffs going on. Um, there's also the fact that companies are now, th there's no work stability. There's no job stability right now in most places. So that causes a lot of stress. Um, the relationships and family problems, we're having a lot of that right now. And uh, people are beginning to feel pressured, especially when they have to stay long hours together. We were used to going out, go to work, uh, leave the children in school, come back. But now some people are all cooped up in the same house and it's becoming a bit of a strain on each other if you have not built relationships that are strong, foundations that are strong. And um, earlier I was talking about um, a lady I'm working with right now, I'm, I'm doing counseling with, and uh, they were locked in different counties. The husband in one county and the lady in the other county. And suddenly they feel like this is working for us better than when we are together. And they are working on divorce. And, you know, when there's a crisis like this, making decisions like those need time. So we're working on, are you sure? What is it that you can do different instead of just separating? And it has come up with, COVID-19 has come up with that issue of relationships that you realize, I is this how we, we were before? Because the more time we're spending together, the more we are rubbing off on each other. There's the issue of financial pressures where if, if not one relative is not working, a friend does not have food. So you're having all these pressures or one person has been laid off or you know, so the, the financial pressures are becoming, they're increasing yeah, at this. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Then there's the issue of bereavement. Um, at this time, bereavement is uh, a big deal because in in especially African setups, bereavement is, is a society thing. We all go together and we are comforting this family. We are working along with them. Now it's about 15 people, five people you have to bury within a few days. You haven't had time to, to grieve. And so you, most people are being left grieving on their own and they really don't have support. And that physical touch is not there. We may make calls and, and do Zoom and Teams, but it's not the same as that physical touch. Someone holding the other as, as they go through pain. There's a fear of crime <coughs> or problems with neighbors. Fear of crime is real right now. More people are being laid off. Jobs are, young people are, are, are taking drugs and we're seeing even crying during the day, pickpockets and, you know, there's that fear. What if uh, there's a burglar at night? What if I'm, I'm late out? There's that kind of fear that causes stress. Problems with neighbors. Um, I was talking about people who are having parties all day. Hey, you, you, for some of us, maybe I've gone to work, I've come back and there's this loud music coming from my neighbor. I'm tired, I want to sleep. This is my neighbor, what do I do? And the parties are just ongoing. One day it's quiet, the next day it starts again. And it's also distressing because there's the fear of infection also with all these people coming for the parties. There's the uncertainty and waiting for important outcomes. Um, For example, uh, tests that are done at the hospital. The doctor has told you we need to do some tests. Waiting for those outcomes or um, this announcement that comes that, you know, with COVID-19, we're going to lay off some staff. So um, we are working on that. So we just needed to prepare you. So now there's the whispering going on. I wonder who's going, who's being left. That uncertainty can cause a lot of stress. Then there's illness, whether it is your own illness or illness of a family member where you, you, you've been told, um, there's a tumor, we need to look at whether it is cancer or it is a relative who's going through that, that also causes stress. Sorry. What what causes, why is stress um, increasing during COVID-19? One of the things is how it it came. It came very suddenly. We were not really prepared for it. We just knew it was a disease that is somewhere out there. And uh, we knew it may come, but we didn't know it would come that fast. So it was really sudden. And and the suddenness of it was also, one day it was announced and then there were these rules, stay at home. Uh, If you're this age and this age, please stay at home wash your hands, do this, do that. You know, it came with a lot of um, instructions and and confusion, and it looks like we were all going to die. So it was really sudden and it was confusing. What what are you supposed to do? Stay at home, doing what at home? Um, Then it is global. There's nowhere to run. I can't decide, let me take a plane and go and hide in another country. You know, like when there's war, you can run away. But this one, it's global. There's nowhere to go. We are locked in. This is where we are. It's also causing severe sickness and it is causing loss of life, especially lately. So that causes stress also. Are we going to survive this? What if I get sick? What happens to me? What if my family gets sick? And and it also came with the fear of, of, of going for quarantine. So we'll all be moved into one place. What happens to us? So it also caused a lot of stress. It has changed our work and schooling conditions. Children don't go to school. So they're at home. And and suddenly you're a teacher and you didn't know how to do some of these things. Then it has no no known end date. Even in any country, there's no country that we really know that we know that it's over, there's zero case. I I think it goes to zero, then we hear there, 
there's a new infection. So we don't even know when it will end. How long will this be? How long are we going to wear these masks? How long are we going to stay home? How long? Nobody really knows. And the disruption of life, of work, schooling, leisure, worship. We can't go to the mosque. We can't go to church. We can't go to the temple. And really, this is really a disruption of social life. Because even schooling, as much as children go to school, there's the social aspect where they're meeting with friends and having time with friends. Um, for some people, just that leisure of going out, going somewhere to the club and doing something different. Worship is also a place. Going to church or the mosque is a social place. And uh, that is now disrupted. Then there's the feelings of isolation. For those who live alone, for those who are not able to visit their families, there's that sense of isolation, like they're really separated from the other people. What are some of the effects of stress if we really go through stress? Uh, when we look at the physical signs, the sweating, you'll notice the sweating in your palms. The palm of your hands are sweating, they're cold. If I touch them, they're really cold. The sweating just somewhere on the face or around the neck. Then there's pain in the back or the chest and the chest feels very tight, like someone is holding something in your chest and that pain at the back. Um, cramps or muscle spasms because of the tensing of the muscles. Remember the fight or flight? So your muscles were tight. So there's a place you feel it has cramped. It's just holding tight. It's like a stone. Uh, for some people, we say they faint because there's, they don't have enough oxygen in the brain because they've panicked through the fight or flight. So there's panic. And after the danger, it feels like it's past. They just pass out and faint. Headaches that keep, you know, there's just that pounding headache because you're not sleeping well, you're not hydrating, you're not eating well, you're thinking and worrying, so there's that headache. Nervous twitches around the eye just flickers because now there's, the muscles there have been very tight, so there's that nervous twitch. <coughs> then the pins and needles sensation, like something is poking on your, on your toes or on your fingers, because again, there's not enough circulation of oxygen. What about emotional reactions? There's anger. There's just breeding anger. You know, it's underlying. And um, it just takes one thing to make it explode. So there's excess anger. There's burnout. Burnout is just that feeling like it's hopeless, it's helpless, and um, uh, you just want to withdraw and just be on your own and you're feeling unappreciated, you're feeling purposeless, you feel like this, what's the point of life? And you're beginning to rethink life. What is the point of life? Then there's irritability. You're so irritable. Good morning is just makes you so irritated. And, and you realize I don't even like that person's voice anymore. And it's somebody you've been talking to. You know, you're just irritable. There's restlessness. You can't sit still. You can't lie still. You can't, you know, you lie down for two seconds. Then you feel, no, let me stand up. You stand, you walk around, you lie down, you sit down. You, you're just restless. And even your mind is restless. You're not thinking on one point. It's moving from one thing, shifts to another. Then there's that sadness. You're just sad. And you're feeling like, what is life about? And and you're crying wake up crying, you sleep crying and feeling so hopeless. Forgetfulness, your memory now is not the same. You could remember things now, you remember nothing. You asked, I thought we were supposed to meet and, and talk and you're thinking, really, we spoke. I can't remember that. Um, oh, you were supposed to make dinner, what's happening? It's already nine. And you're thinking, oh, I was supposed to do that. You're forgetting things very easily. And that feeling of insecurity, feeling like you're alert all the time. You're not secure. Something is going to go wrong. Something is about to snap somewhere. And it will just open up and we won't have anywhere to hold. And now we look at the behavioral effects. The behavioral effects come from right from your thoughts. What am I what I think affects my actions. So if you have anxious thoughts, these are the behavioral effects that you will have. 
this food food cravings craving just say i crave for ice cream and normally cravings are always for things that your body feels uh will energize them and you know sugar energizes for a short while so you feel like a fanta i want a cold soda i want ice cream i want cakes you know things that will boost energy but within a short time it goes down and with the food cravings you're either eating too much or too little of anything then the su sudden anger outburst something that before you would not have reacted that way suddenly you're reacting with a lot of anger and just one thing you've just been asked what happened to uh the book that i left here that book which book where do you think i took it where could i have taken it and it's really it was a simple question which you'd say ah uh, i'm sorry i didn't see a book here but now you have anger outburst drug and alcohol misuse now you are a social drinker before COVID-19. You used to drink on Friday to relax and just be with friends and have a good time. You used to have um, two drinks and you say that's enough. I have to go home now. Now Friday has turned to Saturday. I could also include a drink in the afternoon. It continues to evening. You've added another weekday. So now the alcohol is increasing every day there's an increase then higher tobacco consumption because of the thinking and thinking you light one cigarette you finish this one you light with the other one because now you're thinking and thinking and thinking the social withdrawal the people you used to talk to you don't talk to anymore um you're you're now not calling people when it started you would call to find out how are you um what are you doing right now with this covid 19 and but now suddenly you don't want calls. You're looking at calls with your drink and you're thinking, ah, I don't think I'll take that call. There's a frequent crying. Um, I just asked, how are you? And you just start crying. Oh, you have no idea. My life has really changed. And now you're having relationship problems, maybe in marriage, uh, with your children, with uh, the people who are around you, your co-workers. You're beginning to have problems with them. You can't get along with people. You don't want to be with people. So it's beginning to give you shaky relationships. If it goes on, you, you may end up having some complications. Depression, which is now becomes a constant um, feeling of overwhelmed, feelings of sadness, and you get to the point of feeling helpless. And uh, when you get to the point of feeling hopeless, that life is hopeless and you lose meaning in life. There's nothing in life that looks good to you. Nothing positive is happening. Everything is negative. And you begin to look at life from a very negative outlook. And if it's not treated early, it leads to suicide because you just look and you don't see any help coming through at any point. And, um, some of those cases that we see in families where, you know, a parent just decides with br brother all die because there's nothing in life for us. That is from depression. And then there's anxiety where you keep feeling like something is not right. And, and you can even say, I really can't tell what it is, but I just know, I just have a feeling things are not going to be well. This thing will not end well. It can lead to heart disease because of high blood pressure, because that constant worrying, lack of sleep, eventually causes heart disease and even other diseases like uh, diabetes. Then again, we have lowered immunity against diseases. And at this time, we want our immunity to be high because of COVID-19. So now you lower your immunity because one, you're not eating well or you're eating all the wrong foods. You're not sleeping well and your body is gathering all energy it can get to to work on on your mind on your brain that is not stopping it's working non-stop then you remember we said about muscle aches because of the fight or flight you're having sleeping difficulties and the stomach is just upset how can we manage stress what are some of the steps we can take uh, the most important is number one identify the source of the stress 
uh, well, if you really can't put a finger on it, just make a guess. Make a guess of what it could be. And then list down as many as you can find that could be the source of your stress. Out of that listing, you'll be able to identify, I think this is it. And sometimes it may be, um, I'm identifying the source as financial. So let me not leave it at financial. What exactly about finances am I worried about? Um, I'm worried because rent is coming up in like three or four days and I still don't have enough rent. Ah, so what could be the problem? This is where we are going, so, you know, sort out possible reasons for your stress. Uh, it could be that um, I overspent during the month. Two, do I even have a budget for the month? Or I just buy things as a, I, I walk through town and there's a hawker who's selling this, hawker selling that, and they put very nice onions. And it's just the top one that looks nice. The rest are not that nice. And I buy them. And I impulse buying. I didn't think I, would, I needed them, but they just looked nice. So exactly what about finances? Am I living beyond my means in the first place? Should I get a smaller house? Should I do this? You see, working it to the lowest denominator so that I don't just leave it at, I'm worried about finances. What exactly about finances am I worried about? Then um, we are also going to look at it in three categories. Those that, those that have a practical solution. Do I have a practical solution to this? Yes, I think um, I can uh, minimize my shopping for the month. I can cut down on this, I can cut down on that because that will help me to be able to work out my finances. Um, will it get better with time? Yeah, it can get better with time because if I cut out this, then I can be able to save up on this. Then the, the other category that you can look at is the things that you can do nothing about. I cannot do anything about the family I belong to. That's my family. I can decide to cut them off, but really I won't find another family. Is there anything I can do about my family uh, calling me all the time with demands? Maybe I can uh, tell them the truth that I'm not able to do this, but beyond that, there's nothing else I can do about it. And now we need to look at trying to release the worry of the second and the third groups and let it go. Those things that probably I can do nothing about and those that will get better with time. I may not, I can't worry about things that will get better with time. It is just time that will tell. So I can only give it time. And those that I can do nothing about, I can do nothing about. Then also I need to review my lifestyle. Am I taking on too much that's causing me stress? Am I being everything to everyone? I'm the one who takes care of my family, my spouse's family, uh, the cousin whose job also, uh, they were laid off last week. I have my own family. I have this. I'm taking on too much and I'm not saying no. I'm not saying enough. So my glass now is overflowing. So I can't handle it. So now it's giving me stress. And it's because I'm taking in too much of everything. So there's a need to review my lifestyle. Are there things that I need to cut off from my life? Are there things that I need to limit? Are there people that I need to tell no, that now I can't do it anymore? Looking at that and being able to see whether you can manage that. There also what we call the four A's of dealing with stress that we can look at. <coughs> One, when the, the stressor is there, I can try and avoid the stressor. That's where we talk about knowing your limits and sticking to your limits and avoiding hot button topics. If it's a colleague, really, um, I need to know my limits with, with them. Um, if there are topics that are really hot button and uh, in, in, in some places, politics is really hot, hot button and you want to keep talking about it, but it's going to cause you stress because it's a pattern of good to say things that will hurt you and, and make you feel angry. Just avoid those hot button topics. Um, if it's in a relationship, sometimes there are hot button topics that you may need to avoid for a while so that you leave them for another time. 
and also learning to know your limits. That is as far as I can go. I can't carry the whole world on my shoulders. I can say no. If it's not avoidable, then I can alter the stressor. I can be willing to compromise. I can be more assertive and then I can manage my time better. If really every day we have to talk to relatives on phone just to know how they are doing, then I need to know what time is best for me. Can I tell them that, okay, please don't call me at, at three in the afternoon. That time I'm busy, I'm in a meeting. Can we talk at seven so that we get to a compromise? If it's children and they're demanding for your time, can, I, can we have a plan for the day? so that we have family time at this time so that we all come to a compromise that will be comfortable for all of us and um, so that i can also manage my time better to know what is most important but also what is very urgent can i work on the urgent issues the important and urgent and leave the others for another time can i do my tasks when i have the most energy the harder tasks of the day when I have more energy and leave out the others for later. So managing time also is very important. Then it may be that I just need to adapt to the stressor. If I cannot avoid the, the stressful situation or change, then it will mean that I have to change my expectations. Um, I gave the example earlier of, of, of neighbors who are uh, with this COVID-19, they, they I don't know whether they work or what happens, they have parties every day or every other day. You know, there's noise in the during the day. At night, suddenly it's been quiet. Then at 2 a.m., people have woken up and now it's a new party. And I can try and talk to them. But if it doesn't work, then I may have to avoid, I may have to just change the way I look at it, change my expectations and realize this won't end because they're also going through their own issues. And I can change my attitude towards them. Instead of anger, I can choose not to be angry. I can choose to now look at it and reframe it in another way. I can reframe this problem to make me realize for them to be drinking that much and just having all this, there must be a problem. Can I also look at how, how what, what are they going through for them to be this way? And then I can look at the bigger picture and realize this is going to end. I don't know when it will end. I don't know how it will end, but one day all this will end. So I can adjust my standards of thinking that because I knocked on their door and shouted or wrote on the WhatsApp uh, group that these people just need to keep quiet and it happens again, I may have to adjust my standard and realize it may not happen. And then I'll focus on the positive that at least um, we are alive, we are healthy, that's why we are still at home. I would be in a quarantine center, but I'm at home. Then I may have to accept. I can accept that this is my neighbor unless one of us moves. We are still neighbors. I can accept the things that I cannot change. I can't change this neighbor. I can't change them. I can't change my colleague. There's no way I can change them. Trying to change them will just wear me out. And then try not to control the things that are uncontrollable. Um, the fact that we have COVID-19, I cannot control the fact that I have to stay at home. Or my movements are very limited. I can't control that. It's beyond my control. So can I accept that instead of always wondering, hey, this government, why can they do something? Why can they do this? Why can they, you know, and it's stressing me out. So can I learn that it is beyond my control? Can I also look at the upside of it, that now I've had time to review my life. I've had time to look at my life in a very different way. I've been busy and I've not had time to, to look at my child and realize, wow. And somebody was saying that, oh, when they go back to school, anything the teacher says, I will believe the teacher. Before I used to think they, they are telling lies about my child, but after staying with my child for this month, yeah, I think the teacher was right. So we're also learning each other and we're learning that we can have time together. Um, if it's too much, you can share feelings with a trusted friend and then learn to forgive. Because like we said, some relationships are going through very uh, rocky places. 
and and this anger and this frustration and sometimes you need to talk to someone a trusted friend a friend who will listen a friend who may be able to help you out and learn to forgive one another this is what we call the circle of control we talked about trying not to control the uncontrollable so this circle has it has three layers <coughs> and it tells us the things that we can control and those that we can't control the inner layer is the first one uh, which talks of what i can control i can control my thoughts i can control what i'm thinking about i can stop thoughts that are negative i can be able to do that that every time negative thoughts come i can tell those thoughts stop i'm not going to think that way so those are things that i can control i can control my words i can decide i will be using positive words from now on i'm not going to speak negative i'm going to be speaking negative positive words all the time i may slip up sometimes but i'm going to try and manage my words i can choose um the reply that i will give you that i will not be quick to answer that when you shout at me i will count to 10 and then speak words that are not angry so that's a choice i can make i can choose my actions i can choose to be angry i can choose not to be angry those are my actions i can have that control i can control my behavior i can control how i react to other people when they are bad to me i can choose my reaction i can choose to be as bad as they are or even worse i can choose to react different and decide i'm not going to do that i can control my decisions that every day i have a decision to make every morning i wake up i have decisions to make for that day so i can control that i can control my choices choices of what i do today those are my choices i have control over that i can control my attitude whether my attitude will be a good attitude or a bad attitude that's my choice i can choose my mindset whether it will be a positive mindset or a negative mindset i can control my mood whether to be happy or to be sad or to be um, an angry person I can choose my mood. I can choose my work ethic. I can decide this is my work ethic. For me, um, my contract reads I work eight to five. I have a one hour lunch break and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Everyone else will be sneaking from work, but my work ethic is I will do, I will not steal from my employer in terms of time or what I do. That is a choice that I have. In the second circle, I have limited, um, I can control to a certain level, but not that much, but at least I have a little control. I have some control on other people's actions. I can, I can talk to my partner and tell them I don't like, I don't like it. When you shout at me, we need to talk as adults. And if my partner listens, then I have control over that action. I have um, limited control over other people's choices. I can advise someone on their choice. I can advise my children. I can talk to my siblings on some of the choices and they, can, they might listen to me. So I have limited on that too. I have some level of uh, control over my productivity at work. If it's something I can do on my own, I have that control. But if you're working as a team, I may not have control over my team members, the other team members. Maybe some of them are procrastinating, they're not working on time. So I only have a limited control over that, over my production at work. I have some level of control of whether people like me or not, because it will also be um, according to my behavior perhaps or the way i approach people or the way i talk to them i can work on some of the things in my life so that people like me better i can work on my people's skills that i am not a rude person 
I am not an abusive person, so it makes people like me better. So I have a level of control. But again, I may be the best person according to me, but people still don't like me. So it depends, but I can have that level of um, control. I have some control on my children's future. I can decide to get them a good school. I can get somebody to teach them at home. I can take them to a place of worship where they're learning. Um, I can take them to madrasa. So now they're learning good behavior as, as children. I can take them to Sunday school. I have, I have that bit of control on my children's future. I can guide them on what they can be. So I have some level of control on my children's future. When they grow up, yes, they'll have their own choices. But for some time, I may be able to shape them. I have some level of control where I work. I can decide I want to work um, in this company and apply and get a job there. So I have some level of control. At times, it may not be that much because I may be transferred to another town. But at least I have that level of control. I have control of, I have a level of control of who I can vote for. I can I have a vote so I can decide who to vote for. It's limited. It is there, it is limited because I may want to vote for someone who did not um, buy. I may decide uh, Julius is the best. I, I want to vote for Julius for president, but he decides he won't buy. So I, I, it is limited, but at least I can decide out of all the people who are on that ballot paper that I'm going to vote for this one. I can um, have control of how much my partner loves me because I can I can decide to be a really bad person and a person who is not lovable, or I can choose to to work at, at, at my marriage and work with my partner to make our life better and make that partner love me more. I can uh, also have some control on whether I get promoted because if promotion is about maybe increasing my skills and going back to school, I have control over that, that I can go back to school, get promoted, um, I can do my work better, so I have a level of control of that. I have a level of control about my reputation. Um, I, can, I can do things better so that I don't ruin my reputation, I don't walk around just uh, loudly shouting and my reputation is really bad where I live. So I, I have that level of, of, of control that I can keep a good reputation. I have a level of control on who follows me on social media because I can block out some people. That's a level of control. I can also control my commitments up to a certain level. I can commit myself to um, a growth, for example, but it may be determined by another person that if I go to, if I'm in school to, to get better commitments and it closes, then my, my, my commitments may not work as well as I want. So I can have a level of commitment on other people's thoughts, what they think by uh, talking to them like I'm doing now and uh, trying to, to help shape thoughts, different thoughts, positive thoughts. So it's a level of control because I can do that. I can pass information, but that person has to choose whether they want to take that information or not. So it is still limited. In the outer circle, I really have no control. I cannot control what happened in the past. My decisions, my choices and my behavior of the past there's nothing I can do about that. It's past. I can't go back and pick it up and put it together. It, it's already done. There's nothing I can do about that. All I can do about it is learn from my past, pick up the points that need to change and move on. I can't control if public transport is on time. Maybe there's traffic. So I, I expected it to come by 10. I'm still standing at 11. So I really don't have control over that. I don't have the outcome of most court cases because once the, the the case is in court, it's really determined by the judge and the prosecutor and the witnesses. I really don't have um, control over that outcome. 
I don't have control of a, a sports match. And um, people who bet me tell me different. Uh, that uh, no, I think we can even add numbers here and there and there. I can tell you which team will win. But sometimes one of the star athletes may get an injury and not complete as well as you had predicted. So I don't have control over that. I don't have control over the media and what they will show us. And the, the media can just be, well, sometimes you listen to the news and you just think, how can they tell us to have a good night after telling us all that? So they'll tell you all this bad news the whole day, what's been going on, and then tell you, have a good night with a smile. And you're thinking, I can't, it's too much. And, and I really can't control what they show me. All I can do is control what I watch so I can switch it off. But I don't have control over what they will show. I have really no control about being made redundant because life, things happen. I may not be able to continue working where I am, maybe from an accident, maybe from sickness. And I really can't have that much control. I can't control um, a company closing. At this time, companies are closing because there's no finances and there's limited work. So I really can't control that. I can't control how much stock a retailer has. At least the annoying one that you go to the supermarket and you, you just want to buy everything in one supermarket and leave. this time of COVID, you want to linger in shops. And you go there and the soap that you use is not there. I really don't have control. So I can get annoyed and all that, but I really can't have control over that. I can't have control over celebrities' behaviors and opinions. And um, sometimes even what maybe politicians do and you're really getting angry and it's stressing you out. And really you don't have control over that. It's, it's their behavior, it's their opinions. I can't have control over strangers comments on forums and social media and sometimes you look at the comments on social media and you're thinking i did they have to say that how can they say that and you you actually see people getting uh, angry at what people are commenting and they are very quick to, to reply you really don't have control over that we don't have control over cyber threats which are reality right now where the um you can even get uh, information stolen from your, 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 from your pages. And then I don't have control over strangers' behavior and driving habits. Those people who just drive and you think, which driving school did they go to? And, and they're cutting you in and they are overlapping and doing all manner of things. You don't have control over that. That's their habit. We don't have control over economy and prices. And, and one of the things that's really been just going up and down is the, the price of oil. One day fuel is at its lowest and people just ran and refueled. Then suddenly it's up again. We have no control over traffic. And this is one of the most annoying ones. Traffic, 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 sitting in traffic for so long. And um, I imagine by now we should be used to it, but we still feel this, this traffic. But we really don't have control over who's coming out at what time in their cars. We have no control where we were born. The country we were born, the family we were born into, we have no control over that. We have no control over death. Nobody knows when they will die. Nobody. And, and if they predict, well, I don't know how that happens, but we really don't have um, control over that. We don't have control over government policy. The policies that are made, and it's really beyond our control. We don't have um, control of a threat of war. It, it comes and, and it builds up and we see it coming. And sometimes there's nothing we can do. The most we can do is look for shelter and, and run and hide. We don't have control over world peace because we don't have control over people and their thoughts and their behaviors and the way they think. We have no control over weather. We have seen the weather changes. It's cold one day, um, it's hot the other day, it is raining, 
and we've really had a lot of changes in weather lately and we really can't control that so it is very important to know what you have control over and what you don't have it will minimize your stress because when you keep stressing about another person they should think like this why didn't they see it like this why can't they think like that remember you have no control over their thoughts or actions but i have control over the way i can react i can react to an angry person with silence or i can react to a very angry person with words softer words but it is my choice. The only thing I can choose is the way I react. The only decisions I have full control over are my decisions. So what decisions will I make today? What choices do I want to make today? What are my attitudes? Every morning I wake up, I have choices to make about my attitude, about my mood, about what I will do today. I only have to pick them because they just come at it. It's just because we don't see them. Every morning I have I wake up, I can look out of the window and decide, what a beautiful day. Or I can look out and decide, hey, today just looks like it should be 13 degrees, it's another gloomy day. It is my choice of how I'm going to behave that day. How can we cope with, uh, with stress? Uh, we can do some deep breathing. Remember the one thing, uh, oxygen has been distributed. It is now tied in knots in your stomach. It is in your muscles, in your hands, and in, on your shoulders, and blood has rushed. So when I do the deep breathing exercise, I'm breathing in and breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. I'm taking oxygen back to my brain so that I do not faint, I do not feel dizzy, and I do not feel overwhelmed. So take a minute to take deep breaths, one deep breath, breathe out, deep breath, and then breathe out. Oxygen going to your brain will also help you make better choices and think more clearly. So deep breathing is very important. Then I can also do artistic uh, expression. I can draw a few things, just draw some of my thoughts, draw something that will help me uh, release the energy that is here and I put it on paper there. So I'm just releasing the energy. And sometimes for some people, they just scribble and scribble and scribble and scribble. But you see, you're releasing energy so that the energy that was stored up in your muscles can now be released and you can be more relaxed. Humor helps because humor, when we laugh, we are able to release also good hormones, healthy hormones that go to the brain that release the stress that was there. So either watch a comedy Read something that is interesting and funny. Um, when I'm stressed, that's not the time to watch gloomy news. Watch something that will make you happy and laugh. At least for that moment, you can be able to release that. Physical exercise is also important because it helps to relax the muscles that were very, really, really tight. Progressive muscle relaxation. This is a kind of relaxation where you tighten a muscle, for example, on your face. Tighten the muscle on your face, then relax it. And you'll actually realize, wow, my mouth was really tight because now I was angry and my mouth was tight. Just tighten it, then relax. Tighten your, your chin, relax. Tighten your arms, relax. So you just do this one muscle at a time, one muscle at a time. You can even either sit down, lie down, but make sure you're releasing one muscle and you're listening to yourself. So you're relaxing every muscle so that you avoid tightness of muscle and pain. Then we talked about time management, taking care of your time, setting your priorities right, uh, looking at what is the most important thing, what do I need to do today, what do I need to do now, how do I manage my time, how do I manage my whole day, do I have a schedule for the day so that now I'm not wasting time, that I know between this time and this time, I'll be working within, I'll take a break for 10 minutes and do some exercises just to relax. I'll go for a drink of water, then I'll have lunch at this time. Do you have a daily schedule, especially for people who are working at home? If you don't have a schedule, it is very important to make a schedule. And if you have a family, make a family schedule. And make sure you have time to relax, time to, to take a break, and time to enjoy yourself. And uh, remember also planning and decision making, setting realistic goals, uh, goals for your family, goals for yourself, 
uh, looking at how do I make decisions? Am I looking at the whole picture so that I can make the right decision? Music is also very nice. Music is relaxing. It is calming. It calms your mind. Uh, listen to music that calms you down. Not the one that's talking about problems, uh, but music that will relax you, music that will calm you down. Dancing is a great exercise, especially for people who are not able to go out much. Just put on some music and dance. It will relax your mind, relax your body, relax your muscles. Then we have the stress balls where you press on the ball, relax. Stress, you know, it just helps relax muscles also. And they are available even in, in, in most stores. We could also prevent stress before it gets here. By one, of course, um, it is important to, to look at the signs and know whether you're getting into a very stressful situation. One, eat healthy meals. Food is important for managing stress. If I'm eating food, a lot of starch that makes me tired and I also have stress, then I'll feel tired all the time. So eating healthy meals, keeping myself hydrated and eating fruits and vegetables is very important. Beware of smoking and drinking alcohol that if this is progressing, remember we said there are people who are taking one drink before COVID. Now they are taking drinks every day. That has progressed. So be aware of that. Um, exercising and then taking time out to relax. It's so important just to take time out to relax where you can just breathe out and, and just enjoy some of your own time. If you don't relax, everything now continues to build up. Practice self-care. We're going to look a bit more about self-care. How do you take care of yourself? Take care of your needs. Take care of your personal needs. Needs that um, you will ignore because you're taking care of other people's needs. Learn to take care of yourself. Do one thing that you enjoy every day. Something for me, that I can do for me. Then uh, maintain daily activities as much as possible. We've talked about the schedule, trying to maintain the same schedule every day that I wake up at 10 or at, at, at 9 and this is what I do between 9 and 10. I check my email between this time and this time. I have a meeting. So try to maintain that. It, it helps to put structure to your day, especially staying at home has removed structures. So it's important to put back structures. It helps your brain function better. Uh, reduce exposure to distressing news particularly just before you go to sleep, where you're watching who, who murdered who and uh, who did what, how many people died of COVID. You know, you're trying to keep account. And um, just before you sleep, try to, to reduce this kind of, um, of news. Watch something that is more relaxing. Uh, social media is another thing. You're watching things on YouTube and reading things that are really distressing. Try to do that earlier, but don't bring it at, at almost time to sleep. And then try um, pacing between stressful activities with fun activities, that even when you're doing something that's really straining you, that I'll still find time to do something fun. Find a gratitude journal or a jar. Gratitude is really talking about what am I grateful for? Because sometimes when you're going through stress, we may think, Everything is really, really so bad. But really, at the end of the day, just look at your life and talk about three things that you're really thankful for. Just three things every day. If you can go beyond three, wonderful. But we maintain it at three. Write three things that you're grateful for at the end of every day. And if it's a family, get a family jar. Or even on your own, get a jar where you put the, the, the gratitude, everything you write a slip of paper, put it in the jar. It's very important when it's in a jar because there's a day you wonder, is there anything I'm really grateful for? And when you remove something from that jar and you look and you see, wow, this time I was really grateful for this. I'm even better off than that time or I can, I'm still grateful for this. So just put a gratitude jar. Then there's also, if this continues, remember, when COVID-19 came, we thought it was, most people rather, thought it was just going to be, oh, we're just going to shut down for two months. After two months, we're going to come out. It will be free of COVID. Things are going to go back to normal. We're going to go back to normal. Now, 
we're just going another month and another month, third month, fourth month. And we are realizing when we have to build resilience, we are going to have to build new coping skills uh, with COVID. We're going to have to now change the way we do things. And uh, we are realizing, for example, building resilience, we may have now to look for ways to have meetings with friends that are not physical meetings. So we are seeing people having tea parties on teams and I come with my tea or my drink and we have a, a, some good time together and we laugh and we're going to have to cultivate some new coping skills. We're going to have to realize that for our time now, uh, we may not go to the club, but we can have our own time together, even as a family and play some music and dance on our own and enjoy ourselves. We're going to learn new skills, maybe cooking skills that I can make healthier meals. So looking for new ways to do things and building resilience that we're going to get a little stretched, but we're going to find new ways to stretch ourselves. We talked about self-care. Self-care is very important um, <clears throat> because if I don't take care of myself, I won't be able to take care of others. So one of the things about self-care is working on a schedule and remembering to take brief breaks to care for your own basic needs. Um, I'm going to make sure that within the day I'll have a break, I'll go out, walk around, take a walk, relax, and just have time to myself. And then each day, look for something that brings you joy, even if it's just for one minute. That even that one minute, I'll just find something that gives me joy. If it's something that I'll look at and, and, and um, laugh about on YouTube, something funny and just enjoy myself. <clears throat> then try and get some sunlight. Sometimes for those who are at work, sunlight may not be that easy, but when I'm on a tea break, I'll just go out, stand in the sun for a while and just get some sun the sunlight, get some vitamin D. And sunlight also helps to lighten the mood when we look, especially in this cold season and the sun bursts out and just enjoying the sun for some time. Get regular exercise at least three times a week, do some exercise, avoid or limit use of alcohol and caffeine in terms of coffee after coffee after coffee, cup of coffee, tea after tea, it will make you lose sleep. Then remember to monitor yourself. Monitor, listen, take time to listen. Am I fatigued? Am I just tired or am I just feeling wasted? Like. I just want to fall down and just sleep at this time. Is it normal tiredness? Am I excessively tired? Begin to monitor yourself. Look at yourself. Is this the way I am normally? Am I worried more than normal? What am I worried about? Am I more irritable? Is it that every time people talk to me, I just feel a sense of irritation? Why are they talking? Am I having poor focus? I'm not able to focus very well. Monitor yourself to see whether any of those uh, symptoms that we talked about, are you experiencing any of those? Then remember to pace yourself. Don't overdo things. Don't push yourself over the limit because you have only you. you, we, you we don't have a duplicate of you. So pace yourself. Do things at your pace and don't take on more than you can handle. If all that happens and um, there's a point you have some of these symptoms, then it may, time, it may be time to look for professional help. If you experience any of these symptoms to the extent that it is negatively impacting your work, study, relationships with family or friends, then it is good to seek help. If you're feeling helpless, you're feeling like no one can help me, no one can understand me, I can't talk to anyone. How can I tell them what I'm going through? I feel so helpless. There's difficulty concentrating. And this is going on to the point that now it is beginning to affect your work and your boss is calling you what is going on. You're not working like you were before. There's excessive anger. Those who are around you now are walking on tiptoe around you. Because you tell them one thing, they will explode. So if, if your people are withdrawing from you because now there's too much anger, then it's time to seek help. 
you're overeating or you have loss of appetite you you're just eating on and on and on for comfort you, you you're looking for comfort food and it's also beginning to affect your relationship with others even with yourself you're beginning to have low self-esteem because the weight is increasing then it's time to seek help and then struggling to do daily chores things that you are doing so easily they were coming to you so easy you could wake up and work and wake up at five make sure there's food for the day you've cleaned up and you're ready for work but now it's really so difficult it, it's like you're being dragged out of bed it, it's time to seek help difficulty sleeping you haven't slept two three days you're exhausted you've slept two hours every day and it's not because you're not tired but you're tired but you can't sleep uh, you can't function well at work you can't function well in your relationships where there's increased irritability or irritable all the time you're feeling like you're drowning overwhelmed nothing can help me no one can help me and too many unexplained body aches you have you have aches you go to the hospital you do an x-ray there's nothing you you go to the hospital the doctor checks you over and they say there's nothing blood tests show nothing but yet the pain continues so if any of this is affecting your work you're always on um sick of because you have unexplained body aches you didn't hurt yourself you didn't fall but now it's beginning to affect your work it's affecting the way you relate to others then that is a good time to seek help Some of the things we can look at during COVID-19 that may help you is um, what you're calling make, substitute, don't let, help, and so on. Make it a priority to stay in touch with friends and family. Don't withdraw, don't stay on your own. Um, connections are very important because when you talk to other people, it helps you be able to cope better, um, to be able to be in touch with people who you can talk to. Um, it's good always to look for positive people also, but try to stay in touch with people, with family and friends. Substitute just phone calls for video chatting because um, there's something about the human brain. When I'm looking at you, uh, as you talk, as we laugh, it's different from just a phone call. So you can substitute that with video chatting. Uh, don't let coronavirus dominate every conversation. Hey, do you know how many numbers we have in Kenya now? Hey, I tell you, they're just growing. Hey, Nairobi, in where? Uh, how about in Uganda? Uganda is doing better. You know, everything, we're just talking about coronavirus. Don't let it dominate your conversation. Sometimes try to simply enjoy each other's company, to laugh and share stories. That even when you're meeting colleagues, let's talk about life. How are your children? Well, so and so, that we can talk about other things, not just about coronavirus. Then help others in need. Extending a hand of need to someone who's needy helps you realize that um, the other people who are worse off than myself. So it makes me go to the gratitude jar and add something that um, I think I gave an example to someone earlier that I met someone, they have food, they have been given beans and rice and all that, but they don't have the fire for it. So they have raw food, but they don't have charcoal, they don't have gas. And I'm thinking, wow, that's another problem. And and when you extend your hand to them, you realize, I am blessed. I'm not that badly off. So looking out for places you can help or will help you too. Then remember to draw on skills you had used in the past that have helped you previously. Um, looking at the past experience, there are things that I've gone through. What helped me that time? Then you think and, 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 and remember, oh, I, I, I talked to so and so. Oh, yes, we prayed with someone and I, I felt better. So draw on those skills, things that you did before that have helped you. You know, I, 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 I was able to to uh, lean on someone. I was able to trust someone with my information and I, I got better. So look at things that have helped you. Dig deep into your resources, resources that you already have, that you could have used in the past that can help you now. And then remember to be kind to your mind. 
suppose that when um, stress levels are very high, take a moment to pause. Breathe and reflect. Reflect on your life. Reflect on the good things that are happening. Because stress can have a way of clouding even the good. Can I reflect on good things that could be happening also? Um, even though COVID-19 is here and we may not be able to do all that we were supposed to, that we were used to doing, I'm reflecting and seeing, I've, I've learned a bit more about um, uh, my family. We've spent more time together and we've come to know each other in a different way. Uh, I'm reflecting and seeing, I've not talked to my friends the way I have at this time, making phone calls. Uh, WhatsApp messages, we have so much time in the evening because uh, like for example here we have coffee so there's a lot of texting after that. We've learned a new way of doing things. Um, I was telling someone I, I attend three churches which I could not do before COVID because now it's on, on YouTube so I can move from this one move to another one. I can do church in the middle of the week, I don't have to be there on Sunday and I'm learning new skills. I'm learning new things. Then keep a healthy routine. A healthy routine involves exercise. It, it involves um, taking care of myself. It involves monitoring my thoughts. It involves monitoring what I do. That is keeping a healthy routine. Connect with others to help your mind, free your mind listening to others, being able to laugh with other people, being able to be a helping hand to other people, so connect with others. Um, most important, be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Nobody is perfect and nobody has this thing perfectly. Nobody, nobody ha can tell you, now we have the hang of this, we have a good schedule, we follow this schedule, so we are all doing well. Nobody has a hang of this, we are all learning this new normal we are learning every day so be patient with yourself be kind to yourself don't feel like how come we are not coping as well as that family how come we're always having problems be kind to yourself be patient with yourself be kind to others also then reach out for help when you need it uh, remember that we looked at when to this to see that now you need help if you need help reach out reach out for help um, this is a prayer that we do. Uh, it, it, we do it across the board, whether it's Muslims, uh, Hindu, we do it um, when we are doing Alcoholics Anonymous. And it's for people who are recovering from different addictions or recovering from different issues they've been going through. And it just it's called the Serenity Prayer. It just says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to th change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. That Just asking for peace. Let me have peace about the things that I cannot change. That if I really can't change it, can I have peace about it? That there's nothing I can do about it. That identifying the things that I can change. That I can now have the courage to change. Because it takes courage, courage to make changes. It takes a lot of energy to pick up and decide, I'm going to make a change today. I'm not going to think negative again. And I'm going to, to work on being positive. I'm going to put stickers. It takes work. You put stickers around your house of positive thoughts that if a negative thought comes to mind, I can look at the positive and, and, and just recite the positive. It also takes changes in my attitude that I'm going to change my attitude. Remembering the greatest change I can make is the change on me before I can change other people. So learning to know the difference of what I can change and what I cannot change. So it, just looking at the things that I can look at and remembering to be grateful for what you can change and grateful that even what I cannot change, I can learn to live with it. I have the resources within me. I just need to dig deep enough and I will find them. And with that, I want to thank you and remember to wash our hands, keep our hands clean. We are keeping physical distance. We are not keeping social distance. We are changing that language. No more physical, dis no more social distance. We are going to stay in touch with each other. We are going to call each other. We are going to have networks. So we are only going to keep physical distance. Uh, for those who can't stay at home, and thank you very much. Um, I'm open for questions and suggestions. Thank you.
I hand it back to Julia. Wow, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Caroline. Thank you. That was a powerful, powerful uh, presentation. Thank you. And clients, as I said earlier, if you have a question, we have a, a, a question and answer session, please. I am not seeing uh, uh, any uh, any hands raised. Uh, from my side, uh, Car uh, Caroline, what I can say is that that is a very good presentation at this time. Thank you. I have come to realize that uh, I have choices to make in life and mm. I control my actions. Yes. No one else controls my, my actions, whether I want to be happy or whether I don't want to be happy, those are mine. And of course, the serenity prayer. Mm. It's uh, something as a closure that is very, very important. And also from the liaison side, uh, thank you so much, the clients that we have also attended this uh, presentation. I'm very happy that definitely we have come up with something that we can take home at this time. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Yvonne, for the organization. And to our clients, what I can say is that liaison at this time, we strive to stand with you. At this uh, time of COVID, some areas that also we have stood with you is uh, in terms of these specialized talks. We'll continue doing more. And as also you have seen and also you have confirmed through your relations managers, you can also raise questions that you want them to be addressed. And also, if you want a specific personalized uh, talk with uh, Ms. Caroline, we'll be able to organize that with you through your relations managers. We have also come up on ways to assist you how to adjust at this time. We have also worked, seen that most of the clients, we have also forgotten other conditions that we have, uh, people suffer from because COVID is not the only thing in this, uh, in medical. So we have partnered with our care managers and also through our contact center in, to assist clients in terms of uh, chronic disease management, deliveries, and in those areas um, where there is cessation, we have also been able to assist our clients access their services outside their own um, regions. For our teams in East Africa, we are also very much available through your relations manager still, contact us, and also we'll be able to assist in terms of online managers. And uh, Caro, I can tell you that liaison is within the whole of East Africa. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of our participants who are from South Sudan, others wow. from uh, Rwanda, others from Tanzania, Uganda, and also in Kenya. So we are happy and we say to all the clients, thank you so much. We'll continue doing this through our care managers who will be giving you uh, the updates early enough. As all of us, we pray for the positive end. Mm. Thank you so much. Send your questions. We'll be able to work on them and uh, Carol will be able to answer all of them yes. and also uh, respond to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We can now log off.